Hi guys, uh, I'm Vernon Kid. How's everybody doing? Uh, back, 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 back. Finally, uh, back for Hidden the Classics episode two. How's everybody doing? Uh, as always, Hidden the Classics is where we take trip down memory lane. Of various titles from yesteryears, um, and I pretty much talk about them, pretty much review them like I do my current reviews, things like that, like a retro review, if you say. But I twist, I give it a new, different name, called Hidden the Classics. Um, always will be one to twelve books that I talk about, and I go into my collection and look for some things to talk about. So I finally was able to get my my uh, stat that I wanted to talk about, and we have titles from Top Cow, uh, Dreamwave Production, and DC and Marvel action. So uh, let's kick it off with the classics. Uh, from uh, we'll start with indie and we'll go Top Cow. Um, and that's none other than uh, the very good series that I, I was really loving this series. And um, it's called Hunter Killer. Uh, this is actually written by Mark Wade. Artwork by Mark Silverstein. So you know you're getting some good, damn good artwork with him. Uh, like I said, I enjoyed this series very much. It was a really cool series. Uh, Mark Wade does a very good job writing this. Uh, and you could see from the get-go, he kind of always had that magic. Um, hence, that's why I call him Mark Magic Wade. Uh, the story of this series, um, of Hunter Killer, this is issue one, though. Uh, that, that's one of the main characters on it. His name is Wolf. Um, it's basically, think of, think X-Men but to the kind of to the temp power and also basically the fact of uh, what if really the government and shield and all of them really came down hard and was trying to eliminate mutants but in this world they're called ultra sapiens um, but this was a really good series uh, let me just show you some of the artwork that you can see, uh, like I said, get a good look at some of Mark Silverson's uh, artwork. Where's a good spread that I can give you? Okay. Right, look at that beautiful spread. This big page of. That's just really good artwork. Uh, like I said, Mark Wade did a very good job, in my opinion, with this. And, you know, Mark Silverstein, you're always going to get good artwork, you know, good artwork from him. You know, it's just that, that's why sometimes it's always impressive when I see Mark, Mr. Silverstein, stay on a title more than maybe three to, or maybe, yeah, more, three issues. Because usually he's kind of like, he's like, um, he's like Jim Lee now. Like, he doesn't stay on books for too long because his other duties now, you know, and, but, uh, yeah, it was good, this came out back in, uh, when was this, two, th let me make sure, this is a, I think this is a 2000 C series, um, yeah, 2005, 2005 series, so under Top Cow Image, uh, I do recommend you finding this, and I can't get this thing back in the book, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I do recommend if anybody wants to check this out, it's Hunter Killer, if you get a good look at the title. It's not Hunter and Killer, it's called Hunter Killer, uh, Mark Wade. Alright, so we move on to uh, Dream Wave Productions. This was a, a very... This company, I don't think this company's even around anymore, but, yeah. 
And at first, Dreamwave Production had the Devil May Cry uh, series. And you get that good, lovely uh, cover done by the late, great Mark Tur Michael Turner. Um, and you got Trish on the cover. And my Dante, yeah. Classic Dante, the real Dante on the cover. Pat Lee does the artwork in this. And he does a, the artwork is just beautiful in this title. And basically all it is is a, a comic book version of the first game. That's all it is. That's basically with some added bonuses to it. Um, you had, uh, what was his name? Mark, I think Mark Meek, who does the, the writing. Brad, Brad Mick, who does the artwork. And we get to see some great artwork, like I said, from Pat Lee. Look, there's some great artwork of, uh, Sparta fighting Mundus. Um, this beautiful artwork here. You can just see it for yourself. Beautiful. Um, and then, like I said, like I said, you know, it gets, then later on it gets, it, it turns to, uh, uh, Dante and things like that. Um, this came out, once again, yeah, this was a 2000 book. Um, as you can see, I'll show you some, some Dante artwork. Mm, well, there's a good spread of Pat Lee's Trish right there. You can see uh, Trish right there. And Dante. And then, of course, like I said, it was just a, pretty much a a, uh, a a comic version of the first game. You, know, you see when Trish throws the, his mo her motorcycle at Dante and stabs him with his sword and he pulls it back out and you know, things like that. That's all it was. But it was fun. It, I don't think this series, this lasted too long because I think the company uh, went out of, went out of uh, business, I think. But, uh, you can tell this is old. I mean, it's, it's, it was 395. When was the last time you saw a 395 book? Uh, but yeah, it was, this was fun. Um, and like I said, it's, it's always good to see the original Dante. Alright. So, moving on to DC, guys. Um, Batgirl, number 64. Uh, this was the... Uh, uh, the... A two-part story arc between a fight, pretty much... A fight between Cassandra Cain, Batgirl. This is Cassandra Cain's uh, run and Ravenger. Pretty much, this is uh, Rose trying to get the approval of her father. So, basically, in a sense, basically, go after one of Batman's, you know, disciples. And that was uh, pretty much uh, Cassandra came back, girl. Uh, the first part of it was it, the first part of it. I'm trying to remember who who wrote this. Uh, and Anderson Gab Gab Gabrich, and the artwork is done by L.A. Garza. And in this, we get a a fight between Rose and Batgirl. Uh. It was really, it's really something to see Rose try to get the approval of her father. But in this issue, Rose gets her ass handed to her by Cassandra. Um, just showing, it, it, this issue shows truly, and this was the second part of this story arc, um, that Ro, uh, Cassandra was Rose's better. And she had, and she wasn't an equal. Um, and she literally just drops Rose back to Deathstroke and was like, yeah, here. She, Rose, uh, Cassandra would have, was going to kill her, but she, she didn't because she was remembering the things that, uh, you know, Batman taught her, you know, she, like I said, and it was really good monologuing, you know, of, of how we are, 
to look at Cassandra of the she could have fallen in the path of her mother who her mother is Shiva and her father you know so who was also an assassin so and so she's on that line the one thing I've always respect, liked about Cassandra's Batgirl run was she she really followed that line of black and white and you know that really that line like she can cross it anytime she wanted to like she can go full out killer mode or not but uh yeah this was a good series i i did enjoy this issue um like let me show you um i mean she does something like to rose in here that that she didn't kill her but she does something in here like I, i'll just i'll show it to you look at that she stabs rose right in the throat with her own sword and you know Deathstroke is like you know I'll kill you and and uh, Cassandra says no you won't it's her job as long as she's alive which is about another 10 minutes unless you save her so it was kinda interesting to see that you know she went there she went to that limit to kind of, in a sense, showcase, it also kind of showcased, you know, does Deathstroke care about his children? And in this, you actually saw concern when that happened with uh, Rose. But but uh, with all due respect, and, well, I shouldn't even say respect, guys, because this is pre-52. None of that shit never happened. Yeah. Hence why I have a big problem with the new 52. I have a love rate hate love hate relationship with her. Uh so we move on to Nightwing number 100. This was the 100th issue. In this issue, this was literally kind of in a sense, yeah, that the whole this whole cover kind of explains it, you know, breaking up is hard to do. Uh it kind of was in a sense uh, in the last issue, Tarantula here uh, killed somebody, and Dick just watched it happen. So this is him coming to terms with, you know what, I have to live up to, even if I do care for you, You have to. I have to bring you in. You did kill somebody. And I, I stood there and watched it. And, you gotta, and in this issue alone, Dick is still covering from an injury he suffered before. Uh, and uh, it was it's always good to see Dick in the classic Nightwing not the red but blue um, it was it's good to see uh, the, the the name Bloodhaven you know this is the last time we heard Bloodhaven you know so and you gotta remember that's where Dick was that's where he used to patrol later on you know his Bloodhaven was his city and uh, but it was this was a very good issue Grayson does a good job writing the, the issue and you really see the inner turmoil of Dick in terms of is he doing the right thing excuse me by bringing in Tarantula um, and that's pretty much what it was uh, Superman 670, pre-52. Um, this was the this was the uh, third Kryptonian story arc that was going on in the self-titled Superman. This was the finale of it. Um, I do like that cover. You get to see like the family. It's cool. Um, uh, Kurt. Uh, I think Kurt Brousset does the writing again, does the writing in this, and the third Kryptonian story arc was interesting because we got to see that there was another Kryptonian, um, it was a female, and she kind of was in hiding all this time, she wanted nothing to do with anybody, she had like this real... Uh, self-esteem problem 
uh, what was her name again? Her name was, uh, Carista, yeah, that was it. Carsta, uh, I think I'm saying it right, uh, and someone from her past is coming out there. This is what she looks like. Let me get a look at her right there, this girl right here. But, you know, it was a good story, uh, story line, and once again, like I said, you, you get to see, you know, everything in terms of, like, all the Superman, the whole Superman family, Supergirl, Power Girl, Crypto, all of them in this issue alone, and it's always good to see the Superman family, and, uh, good dialogue between Superman and Batman at the end, which was funny. Uh, the artwork could have been a little better, in my opinion, but, uh, because at times, the Krista, she started looking, like, too mannish, and I was like, okay, she was, that's a woman, right, and, uh, but it was fun, uh, but once again, none of this shit never happened, because, New 52, and you're gonna keep hearing me say that when I'm doing the DC books, uh, Superman, Batman, uh, number 54, this right here, my friends, was, uh, pretty much the uh, the story arc that I talked about in the first issue which was entitled Super Bat where somehow Superman's abilities were endowed into Batman so he had all, all of Superman's abilities and uh, Michael Green and uh, Mike Johnson did the writing and artwork was done by Rags Morales, uh, and yeah, you you could see Superman, uh, Batman learning how to use the powers, and Superman helping him out. And uh, it gets really, really. This gets really, really creepy at times, because Bruce really starts to go overboard now with protecting Gotham, I mean, he starts to sleep up in the cave now like a bat, like literally upside down, and it starts to freak out Tim Drake, Robin, and Alfred, he, he really starts to, which is really uncharacteristic for Batman, he starts to abuse the power, it starts to change him a lot, um, and it's to the point where he actually flies to Santa Prisca, and deals, dishes out a little bit of that R-word revenge on uh, a certain character that broke his back. Yeah, Bane. And he kills Bane. He, he literally kills Bane. I'm not even joking. He... You can see it right here. Puts his fist through his chest. Now, Clark, on the other hand, is very much losing what little powers he has left. And at the end of the issue, it ends very badly for Clark. And all you can see is Batman in outer space, and he hears the whole thing. And you just see him, like, crying, in a sense. Because he, he's like, he literally says, I can hear everything. Um, I don't want to spoil what happens. I should spoil it because if you, even if you have not read it, it something bad happens to Clark in this. Um, and you know what? Let me just show you. Um, there was a mugger. He tried to stop it. Clark gets shot, and Lois is over him. And you can see Bruce out in space, and he hears the whole. He can hear it. And he just sheds a tear. And uh, this is a three-parter because later it gets he becomes very power hungry after a while. But this does happen in the book: a fight between Bane and Bruce Superbat, and yeah, he beats the hell out of 
Bane, he, I kill, he kills him, actually. Uh, but none of that shit never happened. What happened? I don't have any more. I gotta get some more. Uh, so we move on to Robin, uh, number 68. This is during the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. This is the first part of it. Remember this, guys? Um, and too bad we'll never probably have never have another Robin series. Uh, Peter Milligan does writing, and Freddie uh, Freddie Williams the second does the artwork. This came on two thousand eight, so this this is this is four years old now. Uh, the bottom line of this really is. Um, Tim, his big animosity towards uh, Damien. Um, don't trust him. Don't like him. Things like that. You know, Damien, remember Damien saying like he was never the real son. He's the real son. Tim is just a, uh, I forgot what he called him. But he said something that was just, just pissed off Tim. Um, and they have a big fight in this. And it was very surprising to see what Alfred does at the at the end of this issue, and his uh, how he talks to Tim in this. And you know, in a sense, he might have had every reason to talk to Tim like that. Uh, but it was a uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, but once again, none of that shit never happened. Yeah, and I'm done with that, guys. <laughs> Oh boy, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> um, so we move on to Marvel. Uh, some classic Marvel books for you guys. Um, man, I, this one takes me back. Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Punisher, Hearts of Darkness. I'll show you. It actually, the cover is like a big spread cover. Um. Uh, If you can see that, it's, yeah, sorry, <laughs> as you can see the cover spread, it's Punisher, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, uh, Mephisto, and uh, Blackheart. Um, Howard Mankey does the writing, and um, John Romita Jr. does the artwork in this title. Uh, basically, an occult in a small town. Southwest Town uh, makes a deal with the devil, Mephisto, or I should say makes a deal with his son, and John, it's not Johnny Blaze, it's Dan Kench, rides into this town just looking for some, you know, he heard about this, and he realizes that he's not the only one that was there. He goes to this outhouse, you know, this, you know, house, in-house, you know, and he sees people, you know, other people tenants there that are, you know, like, uh, guests in the town, Wolverine, Punisher, he knows them all, and, um, it's basically all about, uh, Blackheart using the innocent children of people of this town to do his, his bidding, he's still trying to almost literally, uh, overthrow his father, as the Hell Lord, um, and I'll just show you some of the artwork in here. Uh, just to show you, like, here's a good spread of Ghost Rider just beating the crap out of Blackheart right here. Um, he actually punches him so hard, he knocks off half of Blackheart's lower jaws. Um, Mephisto looks really weird in this. He's all fat looking. Um, I'll show you. Look at Mephisto. I oh, can't get it. Uh, there you go. He's all fat looking and stuff. Uh, but it, this was a uh, very, very um, fun, fun uh, issue. 
it made sense for these three to work together. You can I could see these three working together. Um, Wolverine is in his brown costume in this one, um, and you know it's always cool to see Frank. And uh, Dan Kench, like I said, was the first Ghost Rider I really got into, and then I did my backstory later on when I when you know. Uh, started seeing Blaze in, you know, the Ghost Rider series, I'm like, who is this, this Blaze guy, and then found out he was their first, but that was a good series, alright, um, Fantastic Four, number 330, 358, this was the triple size 30th anniversary of the first family, um, in this issue alone, basically, the, we find out that uh, we find out the truth about the Elisa Masters, who is um, who was was not really Elisa Masters. Turns out, it was actually uh, Elijah, Johnny's scroll wife. Um, this was a very touching story, too, um, because in this story alone, uh, first of all, let me get the, the art, the, uh, the writer, I'm forgetting who wrote this, this particular issue, um, it's kind of cool, because in the opening you can see, like, all that, people in there and stuff, it's cool, um, Tom DeFalco did the writing, and Paul Ryan did the artwork, and um, in this alone, after, not too long ago, Alicia supposedly stopped dating Thing and started dating Johnny, and that kind of put a little bit of animosity between Ben and Johnny, and uh, we found out later it, was, it wasn't Alicia, it was actually Elijah who was in disguise, she worked for Pybok. For all those who don't know who Pybok is, he was the, excuse me, he was the power scroll. He was, the, he was just like super scroll, but instead of having Fantastic Four power, he had all the powers of the original X-Men. Um, and this was a very, very sincere, like love story as well, of showing that Elijah did love Johnny. She she does love Johnny. Over the course of being in disguise as Alicia Masters, hence, yes, guys, Alicia is not dead. She did not die in this. Um, Elijah really started to fall in love with Ben, with Johnny, and she wanted to be with him. She 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 really started to adopt that. Maybe the Scroll Empire is wrong, you know. I enjoy being on Earth, and I enjoy being with this man, and things like that. And they even go so far as to going to go rescue Alicia from Hybok and the rest of the Scroll Empire that was about to invade Earth once again. Um, and Elijah does something very courageous in this that really proves that she did love uh, Johnny. And uh, it, it was really sad because Johnny even says, you know, he, he loves her too. It was really sad um, to see that. Uh, but like I said, and then of course they, as part of the, um, as part of the, um, the story, as part of, that was just the story, but it was a continued story. Then the other stuff they would show like all the like a gallery of people who became really big in fan size four like Last Star has a picture of him, uh, Annihilus, uh, here's a image of uh, them fighting the Molecule Man, um, and uh, Ram Tuck and Doctor Doom. And then later, and then after that, we 
get an in-depth into, you know, some of the, you know, the Fantastic Four. You know, Mr. Fantastic talks about himself and his powers, and Sue talks about herself, and Thing talks about himself, and talks about how strong he is, how much he weighs, uh, he, and I love how he said it, I love when he, I love when he, uh, he looks on the, um, it looks over on the, uh, on the, the, the scale, as you can see right here, <laughs> it says 500, and he says, all right, all right, I could, I could do a, I could do with a less pizza and rocky road, but anybody cracks smart about my weight, you know, you're going to be needing an ambulance, it's so funny, um, talks about how, how durable his rock skin is, about the fact that he can, uh, he can take extreme temperatures. You got uh, Iceman and Johnny pouring it on. Um, and also in terms of, like I said, bazookas. Can, and of course, he talks about, you know, he may not be the strongest, but he can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people like the Hulk. His lung capacity he talks about as well. How deep he can go into, he can hold his breath uh almost 10 minutes he says i'm not submariner but i can hold my breath i got pretty good you know and then of course they talk about johnny storm then johnny's the last one and he he talks about stuff and i love the line right here uh his fire his fire cage and he says he said here's a trick i learned from my old pal spider-man and I'm like yeah that's cool stuff right there um Talks about Johnny's maneuverability, how fast he can move, you know, and things like that. And then, of course, they talk about the, they give a blueprint of all the, the Baxter building, or no, what is it? This is for Freedom Plaza, excuse me, yeah, at the time. And, you know, after all these years, you know, with Fantastic Four, and just more milestones, like when they first met, they first joined up, you know, meeting the Watcher, and... Uh, Silver Surfer, and the first time they met the Inhumans, and uh, uh, Reed and Sue renewing their wedding vows, and uh, and then it was an original story in the back of um, for for Doctor Doom, but this was a good issue. Uh, it was like I said, it was. They talk about triple size, yeah, it was triple size. It was really thick. As you can see, it's like really thick. Like, you can see the thickness of it, if you can. Like, you can see it was really thick. Uh, celebrating the 30th anniversary of the first family. Uh, yeah. Alright. Um, Tigra, this is part of the Icon series. You know, they would do like four part, a four part miniseries for certain characters. They did Cyclops. They did an Iceman, the Tiger Run. This was done by uh, Christina Z, and uh, one of my favorite artists, Mike Diodata, did the artwork. In this series, uh, Greer is um, looking for the person responsible for, for killing someone she loved. Um, she has. She also worked as a cop in this. Like she had like a uh, image inducer that, which no. In this, they actually showcase that. She can turn off and on her her abilities. Like somehow later on, if I remember later on, she was able to like shut it off. Like she can go stay human, for, and then she could like sporadically change. It was almost like a werewolf in a sense. But um, the artwork was really good. I love the dialogue between her and Cap. You know, was really fun, and the fact that she wanted to do this alone. I love the line where she says, "No, Steve, this is not an Avengers mission." This is this is my mission. This is just for me. Uh, it was really really good, and I enjoyed that a lot too. Uh, then later on, not a while ago, later on, guys, Marvel decided to give uh, the Human Torch his own ongoing series. It didn't last too long, but uh, this was the first part of the ep issue. The first part of the, the first 
story arc of the series called Burn. Burn. Um, and it's supposed to be a story years ago, the beginning when Johnny supposedly was still going to high school. And he was showing off all his, his powers to people. And um, Mark Kiles did the, the writing. And Scotty Young did the artwork. I don't mind Scotty Young's artwork. I like it for just the cover, but I don't think I could. I'm not really big on him doing it for like interior artwork, though. Um, but the story was pretty decent. It was like, you know, Johnny, you know, people knew who he was, and he went to school, um, and. He had a girlfriend, and but there was another guy that liked her, and he he wanted to. He was really upset about it, you know, like you don't deserve her storm. And they had a fight at the end of the issue, and you know he's he's Johnny's like you know, they start the fight, and you know this guy, uh, forgetting his name right now, he basically says you know, you know you're not a good fighter, Storm, and you know he's got Storm in a full Nelson and a half Nelson, and and you know. And Johnny literally burns him by flaming on when he's in a full Nelson. And you see him like on fire. His arm, his upper arm, his whole side of his body from here all the way down is on fire. And it's almost like, and that was like the big cliffhanger. Um, well, yeah, this, this this series was okay. I think it lasts only 12 issues. But, uh, you know, I, but it was okay. And last but not least, it is always a pleasure to um, read this, reread this, or just look through my collection and just uh, always take a peek at it. Young Avengers number one. Oh my God! Alan Hinberg and Jim Chang, Chung does do the artwork. Who, whoever. Remember when this first was being advertised about Young Avengers? Who are they? Who are they related to? Are they related to anybody? This was, is still to this day, still a treasure to me. Because this was the first issue we got to see at the time. You know, Wiccan wasn't called, he's called Asgardian. Um, uh, Hulkling wasn't called Hulkling at the time. He was he was called something else, the Patriot, and Iron Lad. You know, you know, this this is just so much fun to read again. And I re I read reread it uh, last week, and just like wow, this is so cool. And this is during remember this is during um, Avengers after Avengers disassembled, so uh, we get to see this. You know, it's Jessica Jones looking into who these kids are and everything like that. Um, the Steve thinking that okay, we have to stop these kids before they get killed. You know, things like it, it, this is just such a treasure to me, um, and that's why I keep this bad boy in such good condition. I'm like, this, this is a treasure. You know, this is the this is the Young Avengers I love. And that's why I was sad and found out that Alan Hinberg didn't come back to do the do the, you know, the the next chapter in them. I'm hoping he comes back someday to write the Young Avenger because I think he's one of the few Young Avenger writers that I trust. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this is really good. All right. So, uh, there you have it, guys. Um, a trip down memory lane for uh, you guys once again. For hitting the classics, uh, I'll be back again with another episode. Uh, just got to go through my collection and see what else I'll pull out. Uh, somebody, if anybody asks, us, so will you ever review any Spider-Man? No, uh, that's for hitting. That's Chronicles of the Web. You got to go to my main channel, and I'll for that. Uh, but everything else is fair game. But uh, other than that, you guys take care. I will be. Putting up, of course, you know, the my regular comic review once I finish reading all the books. Um, I did put up the haul video so you can see what I've gotten. 
uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace.